All right, hello everyone. We are back here for hole number nine, conclusion of this uh, expert guide for the Earth Day tournament. And uh, basically the only thing I'm really going to be worried about here is having a decent rough iron, having a decent sand wedge that I feel comfortable, both of those. Let me see what I am for accuracy, 65. Okay, that's what, ah. Might have over adjusted that last pitch. Forgot that it was a 65 accuracy here and not 90. <clears throat> but, uh, you know, just in case tragedy strikes, you know, it might be smart to put on a long rough iron, long sand wedge. Because you just never know. Um, I'm assuming we're going to get downwind and be able to give this a shot towards the hole. So I'm going to set up accordingly. Um, just seems like that's the way the setup's been. Masters been more downwind. I think this tournament, from everything I've seen so far, they're trying to bring back a little bit more of that downwind nature, but only to an extent. You know, make it to where the par 5s are down, but the par 4s might just be, you know, a little bit harder to get. And just as I thought, it is pointed down towards the hole. Um, so Globe is going to be the ultimate ball here. Um, especially to have that bit of extra side spin is going to be crucial. Um, you know, I usually try to land this for a target line. I'm a little worried that it might not make it down that far, so I might just have to aim my start aim just a little bit right. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'll stack a bullseye on top of that. I'll go an additional seven to eight rings, about 2.8 full targets um, is about what I'm going to do for this hook. And as you can see, I backed off the top spin. I want to try to get. Uh, foremost, ah, you know, I, you, you can't anticipate that you're going to land on that left edge of the fairway every time like that. So, um, you can't, you can't assume that you're ever going to be that left to where, you know, more top spin there would have been a good thing. Um, you know, top spin wise, I was pretty good. But it's a very tricky shot to pull off, and that's one of the biggest reasons that, you know, Globe makes that a little bit easier. So had I hit that identical shot with a Globe, I would have been over that bunker, for example, and it would have been going towards the green. Would have given me a really nice chance at Albatross there. And unfortunately, I am not going to have a very good chance at Albatross, but I still will technically have an Albatross chance. And there you see just landed on the rough. And you see it does run back into the fairway if you do make that mistake. So not the end of the world, but just to be safe. Um, you know, you never know what wind you're going to get. Now that you see that it's downwind and you do, you know, there's no real threats. Um, now, what I do want to say is... You know, this is probably pretty close to maybe five per ring, six per ring um, for my adjustment. Um, I'm going to go, let me pull that back just slightly. Right around two rings, more or less. It looks like it's shooting just to the right. It was a little under adjustment, um, just slightly, but it was, you know, pretty close. It was probably about half a ring that I needed to pull back more. <clears throat> there, so right around probably four per ring would have been a pretty spot on adjustment. I used about five per ring and went just a little bit over two. Should have probably went a half ring more than that. 
I'll try to pull it in there pretty close to the to the cup there. So, you know, one of the best shot tips I can give for you for that drive is, you know, if you have globes, definitely use them. Um, for the most important reason, the extra side spin is going to be crucial. But also landing it a little bit farther is going to make it easier. It's going to bring that bunker out of play a little bit more, the one that I just rolled in. Because you'll be landing it farther, which means that the second hop is going to hit it less often. So that's going to be a good thing. So, you know, highly recommend that as a strategy. If you have to go out at the Berserker route, just be sure that, uh, you know, you're doing everything you can to get the ball back left. Because one of the hardest things for that shot, um, you know, one of the... The easiest things to do is just to say, oh, I'm going to crank, I'm going to crank the top spin full. Well, if you do crank the top spin full, the odds of you getting it back left enough are going to be minute. They're going to be very, very small probability that you'll get it back left enough. So here, as you can see, we are kind of into max club here uh, plus 15 it says so here you are going to see me go probably 15 rings from this spot so one, two things to consider one we're into max power and the other one being that uh, and it looks relatively spot on for an adjustment, just a ring or two light. Um, so we're making an adjustment at max power, not max distance. So at max distance, um, you know, it's 1.1 per ring. And uh, on, you know, 1.08, 1.1 per ring. But uh, at max distance, you know, there's going to be at least... First off, a Berserker is plus 13% power, um, plus the fact that this is, uh, you know, downwind in nature, downhill, down, down, downhill in nature. So you're looking at needing to play at least 30% extra wind minimum, absolute minimum there. Um, so let's think about that. If it was, if it was 1.1 per ring. Um, If it was 1.1 per ring, then 30% less would be 0.8 per ring. So at 0.8 per ring, if the wind was, um, what was it, 10 there? Then that would be 13, 14 rings at the very minimum. So. You know, might even be a little bit more adjustment than that, as you can see. Um, I do believe, you know, I was I was not very, I, I was rushing a little bit. Um, you could see that I went roughly 15 rings there um, for that adjustment, and uh, it was just a uh, a little bit light on the adjustment, so. It just kind of goes to show you how much you actually need to go. Um, not necessarily for, you know, the land zone that you need to correct for, but it's also that side wind nature pushing the ball farther to the right than what you see on the ball guide. So what I usually do for playoff holes is I'll go, as long as I can do it, I'll do an overcorrection method, which is what you're seeing me do there. When I'm going 15, 16 rings, I'm more overcorrecting. I'm landing it left of where I intended to originally set up because I know that the second and third and fourth hops are going to be much more right than what you see on the ball guide. So that's the reason that you see me playing it that way. And all in all, you know, it gives you a nice uh, shootout result. As you can see, you know, get in there pretty tight every time. And gives you optimal chance to uh, pick up wins.
Um, so there you have it. Uh, hopefully you guys are able to get through this shot guide. Uh, no too broad. I didn't see, you know, this is a very fair setup for the most part. Um, gives you a lot of opportunity. All three par fives are gettable. All one and eight are also gettable. Um, and let's keep in mind at least, you know, hole one and six, which are ideal for those new earth balls. So, might be beneficial to pick up. You know, let's take a look at the offers in the shop. The, you know, that could be a decent offer. $20 offer. You get a good gem boost. You get a decent uh, chest out of that. And, you know, having 40 balls could be nice. It'll work you through this tournament plus give you a couple extras. So, uh, good luck with this uh, tournament setup. Um, like I said, I will be back tomorrow to just kind of give you a revised doc on this. So, good luck overall there. And uh, see you guys next time.